This time on Pedal Box, we're going back to cutting things. As we said before, these are too long. We need to shorten these quite a lot because the bottom ones, while they're okay and they have plenty of room, the top ones really don't. It bangs on the diff, it bangs on the chassis, it generally bangs on everything on this side and ends up somewhere inside the block on this side. It's not great. Moving a lot of this around means we're going to have to use some mats. Yeah, the way the suspension moves under compression and as the car leans over in corners, there's a bunch of complex interactions here that I can't really get my head around, but thankfully we found a computer program that we can outsource all of that hard work to. We just tell it where we want to put our suspension hookups, and we test. And then we move them and we test again, and eventually we figure out where we need to attach everything. Yeah, by a process of elimination we work out what not to do, and what will probably be fine. So this is no good. If we have this underneath in a nice straight arm, we hit a problem, or rather this hits a problem, which is the bottom of the chassis. If we lower this down too far, we then hit the CV joint, which means we can't really get away with a nice straight arm from the top to wherever we end up mounting this. As a result, we have cut things up. With this mounted on here, we can approximate a reasonable shaped control arm which will give us enough travel to clear the chassis leg and keep out of the way of the CV joint. Now all we need to do is tack this up. So we've spent quite a bit of time just faffing around with this, bending and, and what have you, and the sort of eureka moment was when Chris pointed out that this is just a triangle. However complex all of this looks, this is just a triangle between the centre of this pivot, the centre of this pivot and where this will eventually go. But the important part of that triangle is this edge between here and here because that's where the whole thing pivots around. So we have a piece of bar that simulates the end of that and we can point it in line with this bush here to the centre point to within a fair fraction of this bush and work out what that line is. And we've tested it by lifting this and the bar, for the most part, doesn't move around. It moves around because it's not anchored, but for a given value, we pivot nicely around that, that angle. Which is convenient, because we were kind of scratching our heads for a good while. But it also means that we have an approximate shape for the arm that we need in order to clear underneath here, across the top of here, and we can start working out mounting points. One characteristic we're trying to engineer in here that the original car didn't have is we should be picking up some negative camber when the tyres compress. What we really, really want is when we're, corn when we're turning into a corner hard and the car rolls over a little bit, we'd like the outside wheel, the one that we're leaning onto, to actually pivot in slightly so that the tyre uh, is sort of digging into the tarmac a bit better, so the insides of the tyre should sort of come up a little. The way we get that is by having shorter upper arms compared to the lower arms. The original suspension geometry that came off the TT 
had roughly the same length arms on both, and what that kind of ended up with is the wheel would just move parallel to the body, the wheel mo would move up without gaining any camber. Which means that if the car rolls over, the wheels are also rolled over with it, they're just at different heights to track the road underneath. But that means that you're only ever driving around on like a corner of the tyre rather than the whole flat bottom. So we're trying to fix some of that because we can, since we're customising it. The top of the hub basically comes in quite quickly as the upper arm rotates in. Well, with a longer lower arm, the bottom of the hub moves a lot more vertically. So the bottom moves up and the top moves up and in, which gives us the camber that we're after. Now, some of the camber that you pick up under compression like that is sort of taken back out by the fact that the whole car is leaning over. So if your wheel moves in five degrees to the body, but the whole car is five degrees over, the wheel is still vertical, which is fine, but we'd ideally like to pick up a little more so that the wheel is still ever so slightly cambered under compression. So at this point, although the next thing that we want to do is locate our lower suspension arms, the actual thing that we have to engineer around at the minute is this fixed point here, which is our gearbox brace. All it's there for is to stop the engine from rocking forward and backward under torque, but it is kind of a concrete point around which we have to build the rest. So the rough plan at the minute is we build our little frame round and down the bottom here, and once we've done that, we can then get an idea of where we'll have available to connect our lower arms to. So we've got our blank in 3mm plate and measuring it up against the bracket, which is 160mm wide. So centering that across there gives us a little bit of room for some fillets to come round. Uh, we can always add in a little bit more gusting if we feel the need to, but I think that's probably going to be okay for, for what this load is going to be. Uh, we just need to mark out the two hole centres, drill them out, and then we can bend this round and fit it up to this. So we've taken this part of the gearbox mount off so that we can mark the holes. We've aligned it through the centre onto a little cross in the middle and we're just colouring in the bottom edge of one of these bolts that matches up with the holes in the gearbox mount. That way we put these through and we can mark out with a high degree of accuracy where they need to line up onto and we don't need to make quite as many guesses. So we've made a couple of holes in this, thrown a few bolts through here, and we can then draw round because we very, very roughly cut out the hole for this. So now we've got an accurate line that we can go up to, which will be the hole at its narrowest point. We may need to widen it a little bit because this does taper down in. But we just need to clean this up now, and we're getting closer to being able to weld it on. So, that's the last weld for now on our gearbox mounting plate bracket. This is just about ready to put on the back of the car now. What we need to do is just bend over the edges so that we can weld it onto the rear frame that we're building, and then we're good to go. So we decided not to put the strip on the bottom of the mount in the end, so we're just going to mount it onto the cross member now. We've welded up our gearbox bracket onto what's going to be the cross member for our rear I guess you could almost call it a subframe. Um, the next step now to, is to attach it to the main chassis legs up here. Now what we've done, I've just mocked up with a couple of little magnets and bits of steel rod here, is roughly the shape that we think our vertical leg is going to come down on. So it's going to be another piece of 60 by 30 mil box section that we just run up this way onto the bottom of the chassis leg. Um, these rods roughly mark out the corners and basically what we're going to do, we're just going to cut the end off it uh, to duck down to a slant, bit of a bevel on there, and put it on the top and up onto the bottom of the chassis leg. It's a, f it's a couple of different cuts because it's off vertical that way and it's off vertical forwards. We're gonna have to notch out uh, this side so that it sits down that way and then notch out the front so that it sits forward. So it's two separate cuts we'll have to make on each of them, uh, which we're marking up at the minute. And then we'll get that all put together. So we finished the compound cut across the top and we've also put a notch in. That means when it sits on this lower member, we have a much longer weld area around the whole length. In order to work out the height that we need, take a piece of stock, put it across the top, and we can just make a mark for the height we need it at. We're actually going to make this one a little bit longer than we need, notch the other side so that we can balance them off because this pivots around and we don't want to get one side longer than the other. So we've realised the problem we have with the uprights, now that we've cut them both to length. This side fits absolutely fine, doesn't hit anything. This side now interferes with the drive shaft. As it goes up, we lose 
probably half an inch or more of travel further down here before we hit the bump stop. And we actually lose neither, nearly an inch before the drive shaft gets as high as it possibly could up here. That's annoying. We've made all these nice cuts and they look beautiful and they're useless. So we're going to have to notch this back piece off and then just cut the front off once it's in and plate up the back of it. It's a shame because frankly it looked better, but needs must, drive shafts are important. So here we are. Now we've got our uprights tacked in place, we can get on to seaming those in and making sure they're firmly attached to the rest of here. We put a couple of um, mounting pieces on here to, just to make sure that this didn't move around too much while we were welding it, which seemed to have worked. Yes, yeah, so we're going to take these off shortly. Uh, we're going to flatten off the rear face of these and bring them down flush with, a, with the back side of our cross member. And that'll give us a nice little area onto which we can actually build our anti-roll bar mount brackets. Yeah, so with that being able to mount on there, we can also look at where we need to bring forward for our lower mount, which is what we had to divert away from to put all this in. And there's a couple other cosmetic bits to sort out on the chassis, but we'll take you around those on the next episode.